the United States, couples do it in a close embrace. In the Cook Islands, people do it without touching. And in Morocco, men and women do do it, as long as they don't do it together. Dancing. It's your pulse, it's your heartbeat, it's your breathing. It's the rhythms of your life. It's the expression in time and movement of happiness and joy and sadness and energy. It's a venting of energy. And that's common to all the cultures. It's all the cultures and it's common to all individuals. Dancing will visit 18 countries around the world and demonstrate how dances of different cultures have been shaped by their history, customs and traditions to produce the extraordinary diversity of dance expression we have today. Dancing is as much about why we dance as it is about how we dance. We live in a global society where cultures clash, but dancing is something that we all share. And through dance, we can move across the boundary lines of race, language, and economics. When you hear the drums, the inside of your head actually sweets you. It's just like tasting sugar. You're not conscious of it, but it makes you move. Dancing. It's the world of the past, the present, and the future. Every year, children from a wide range of cultural backgrounds are brought together by New York's National Dance Institute. After months of rehearsal, they put on a show. For Jacques D'Amboise, director of the Institute, dance is fundamental, encoded in our very makeup, defining us as human. You can dance anywhere, and you can dance in your mind and in your heart. The thing that dance does is it doesn't have any boundaries. It's global. It's cosmic. And yet, each culture develops their own form, and each individual in a culture expresses themselves through dance. What is the first thing that we can imagine that each individual experiences. A movement when you're swishing around inside a mommy's tummy and a heartbeat and a pulse, ba -boom, ba boom And that's why the basic beat is a one beat with an upbeat. Boom, 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 and the rock and roll, and the marching, and I mean, it is, and the stomping, and the, and the grunting. Uh, 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 uh. It is the most basic beat. That, and now baby is born, and what happens to baby? Baby goes, ah, 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 rocks in time. It moves in time, and it makes a sound in time. It is singing and dancing. That's what it's doing. These kids learn that dance has the power to change the way people feel and the way they feel about the world around them. While Jacques D'Amboise teaches children how to dance, he also exposes them to new ideas about cultural exchange and new ways of understanding their world.
This year's performance celebrates the cultural diversity of the American experience, beginning with Native Americans and the arrival of Christopher Columbus. It's your pulse, it's your heartbeat, it's your breathing, it's the rhythms of your life, it's the expression in time and movement of happiness and joy and sadness and energy. It's a venting of energy. It's an extraordinary, and that's common to all the cultures. It's all the cultures, and it's common to all individuals. These kids are making a New Orleans Cajun stew, like dance style. Yeah. They just all of a sudden pop up. Good luck, I hope you're counting. One, two, three, four, get a five, six, seven. With its pink crayfish and tasty seasonings, the stew mirrors the mix of people and cultures that make up America. Quickly, the kids discover what it means to work together and to respect each other. They say your name. They don't call you by like a slang word they might use. Five, six, seven, go! Because really here, the basis, the central of it all is dance. To have fun, to have a good time, to be with your friends. Take a partner. Doesn't matter whoever's next to you. Right? Grand partners. Ready? Up, let's go. Get set. A five, a six. here with my friend, my friend. The two of you do it and watch this guy and his buddy. They just got off the aircraft carrier. They've been on the ocean for a long time and they're a little wobbly. Five and six and seven and go. Watch his feet. See, he doesn't set. This guy sets. Stamp it. No, lift it up. Now lift it right here. That's it. Yes, yes. See the difference? Uh, the dances we do is very, very difficult, and it takes takes time to learn how to do it, and patience too. Try this: one, two, three, and four, five, 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 five. No, five. That's it. It ricochets off. Five. Bend knees six. Jump in the air and bend both knees. Point. That's it. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, jump seven, eight, faster. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it's gonna be faster. One, and two, three, four, five, and six, and seven, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have beats and dancing, and when you're and in your life, you just do what you want to do. You go your own way. And in dancing, when you're dancing with a group, you have to stay on the same beat. But when you're in life, it doesn't matter. It has a lot of action and movement, and I like I love action, I like to dance. I mean, it's just like, it's just like you're in heaven. My dancers, sit down and rest. It's gonna be a long day. I like um, the combinations. I like thinking. I like doing 20 things at one time, using my body. I like uh, stomping my feet. I like jumping around. I, I, I'm a movable person. I like just moving. I just get like hyperactive. Like I start doing some steps and oh, like let's say they give you a really complicated step and you're like, wow, this is hard. Once you get it and you got it, you know, down packed, you really get excited. It's like, yes, I got this. And you keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And it's like, wow, this is really good. Give me something more. And they give you another complicated step. And you're like, wow, that's complicated. And then you get it again. And then you really get more excited. And you just want more and more and more. You're nervous. But then, like, when you get excited and it comes to your head, you feel like your body has loosened up. And it's not, it's not um, all crumped up and tight and nervous anymore. It's loosened, it wants to do whatever it can do. And your mind then controls the body. Dance is, I think, one of the most if not the basic of all arts. But everybody thinks, what about music? I don't divorce the two. Like you cannot divorce time and space. We can't talk in our language without using time and space in our language. Our tenses, our past, our future. I'll meet you later. Well, that implies some place and traveling and time. Everything we do has time and space. And dance has been invented evolve to express the human being living in the present and being part of time and space. This is dance. It starts with the shoulders, but then with a little more heat, it slips to your hips. And then it goes to your feet. It starts with the shoulders, but then it isn't complete till it slips to your hips. And then it goes to your... Among the thousands of kids who learn to dance, there'll always be one or two who are special, who become so energized by dancing that they just can't stop. Greg Burge was that kind of kid.
dance is a, it's a nutrient, you know? It's something that I need. It's something like, you know, the air we breathe, the food we eat. These are things, these are necessities. These are things that we need for survival. For me, dance is a nutrient. It's, it's my nourishment. Six, seven, eight, one. Though most famous for his tap dancing, Greg Burge is trained in ballet and jazz as well. He performs on Broadway, in Hollywood, and is choreographed for rock star Michael Jackson. Since he was seven, he has taken daily dance classes. Oh, that was good. There are times when I feel I can be depressed, and I can't even pinpoint what it is that's bothering me. And I'll go take a class, and I'll come out of that class, and I'll feel just great. It's, it's, for me, it's therapeutic. I feel I was born to dance. I remember Six, at three years old seeing Sammy Davis Jr. on the Ed Sullivan Six, Show. And uh, that's when I got the bug. Drive down. When I was younger and I he would hear music, no matter what type of music it was, I would start choreographing in my mind. I would envision, I would see people dancing and I thought everyone did this. And you know, I didn't realize that this was something that some people do, but the majority of people don't do that. You know, I'd hear the music, but no matter what it was, if it was jazz, I'd find myself tapping and, 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 and listening and, and, and seeing little rhythms, or if it was ballet, I'd find myself, you know, envisioning a pot, a pot of door, you know? I, I think I, and you know, the funniest thing as a child, I had my G.I. Joe, and I used to make my G.I. Joe dance. <laughs> I remember when I was shooting the movie A Chorus Line and we were doing this number, Surprise, Surprise, I was really hitting the lines and the movements and I thought I was really precise. And the choreographer was saying, do it again and I want you just to just go as far as you can. And I got so caught up in the movement, I totally abandoned the movement and it just went to a whole nother place. So I I've had two or three times in the course of dancing where everything so worked that time slowed down. That I was in, I looked, I felt as if I was outside myself watching myself move in slow motion and I could enjoy myself. And at the same time, I was doing it and in control of it. I was in control of two aspects of it. Two or three times in my life, and I still can feel that. I can, suck the thumb of the joys of those moments. During his career, Jacques D'Amboise has been most celebrated as a principal dancer with the New York City Ballet. Here, he is performing Apollo, choreographed by George Balanchine. Ballet was his passion. Today, empowering young people through dance is his mission. When you move your arms around, it's called port de bras. Say it. Port de bras. Say it. And what's it mean? 
movement of your arms is called port de bras. What's this step called? What's this step called? What's this position of your feet called? What's this position of your feet called? What's this step called? Is it tandu? Or is it tandu? All right. What's this? What's this? What's it called? When you bend your knees. Oh, okay. I want you to make your toes. In Jacques Dambois' classes, these New York kids are getting their first exposure Push so to ballet. Push hard with your toes. Point them straight to the floor. And then plie again. You do plie, two jumps, and straight. Plie and jump and jump and straight. Plie and jump and jump and straight. And wait. Plie, jump, jump first time. Plie. This is the Most of these young people will plie. not grow up to be professional time. dancers. Now nothing. Stand up. Do it again. However, Somebody ballet classes please. all over the world, whether for fun or serious study, and whether in New York or St. Petersburg, follow much the same teaching routine. For more than a hundred years, Russia has been one of the centers of classical ballet and has produced some of the world's most important dancers and choreographers. The ballet school established under the Tsars of Russia continues a royal tradition that goes back to the courts of the Italian Renaissance in 17th century France. Упругая плие и вскок. Раз, очень сильный. И села. Локоточки закруглила, села. В четвертую. Голову оставляй, Света. Подтяни поясничку на переднюю ногу. Вся. И. Раз. И. Два, Марина. Колено в зеркало, в зеркало, в зеркало. Смотришь. Сели. И, пожалуйста, ручки. Так, пожалуйста. Девочки, все вместе портер. Вздохните, я пока буду показывать. И раз, и два. Сделала один, сделала второй. На одну четверть поворота. Посмотрим туда, да? На переднюю ножку корпус. И раз, и два, и три. Этой ручкой вздохнула. Пошла сюда. Довернула, довернула. Поехали. Throughout its history, ballet has expressed the ideals of aristocratic behavior. Its fairy tales and romances are intended to create an atmosphere of effortless strength and grace. It is an attempt by the aristocracy to be unearthly, not ordinary, not of the peasant ilk, not of the bad noise and bad smells and sweat and toil of ordinary life, to be with the gods in fairy tales and everything pure and wonderful and good manners. It's the art of the air. To understand and fully enjoy what one is doing as a dancer, to enjoy the actual steps and movements introduced to the dancer by the choreographer, they should be performed as second nature, precise 
and immaculate. The dancer should understand the character he is playing through the legs and through the body. I can feel my characters from the ends of my hair to the tips of my toes. Erik Mukamedov continues the Russian tradition. He studied and danced with the Bolshoi in Moscow. Now he is with the Royal Ballet in London. He and partner Viviana Duranti, who is Italian, are learning the choreography of Sir Kenneth Macmillan, who is English. Ballet has become an international language, a language in which the physical and emotional are inseparable. When you take him, can you look at him for a second before you open out? Most probably, it is difficult for me to judge what I do on the stage. It also gives it more control, that little stop. I can say about myself, did I do the right thing or the wrong thing? It is difficult to specify what was right and what was wrong. За зрителя, что он чувствовал, что он переживал вместе со мной. Я думаю, что для меня вот это вот качество, вот это вот сам балет. I can say whether the steps were right. I can know my state of mind, but I cannot know what the public feels or what they understand. Переживала все те же самые. But the feeling I strive for is when my whole being feels like the Grigio in Manon or Romeo in Romeo and Juliet. Ты чувствуешь, что от зрителей идет такое, может быть, это немножко так как-то, не знаю, по философски. Then there is some sort of magnetism that hypnotizes me and unites me with the public. Нос, который объединяет тебя вместе со зрителем. Mukamedov and Duranti dance the lovers in Kenneth Macmillan's ballet, Manon. I have noticed many times that when I am dancing in Manon, I feel that I am really in love with her. I always feel this, and it is very real. У меня состояние такое, что я реально влюблен в Манон. Именно в Манон. Я вижу. It is Manon that I love, though I understand that it is Viviana Durante in front of me. Достаточно много времени в студиях для того, чтобы we spend so much time in the studio in order to get the steps right. But during the performance, I see Viviana and I feel Manon. I am in love with Manon. If someone tries to check my head or my heart with some special medical device, it will be obvious that I am madly and passionately in love with Manon. I am ready to sacrifice my life for her. I am ready to be on my knees in front of her and carry her in my arms.
music is an immediate emotional, the most powerful bang, it goes. There's a conduit from those vibrations in the atmosphere that are through the ear, through the mind, to chemistry, to emotions, to our hearts, immediate. But the same with gesture. <laughs> Gesture is a communication form that is in our bones, stronger than the content of words and the meaning of words. It is primary. The Indian classical dance form of Bharata Natyam uses a complex language of gesture to act out the poetry of the song. The song compares the young woman's eyes to a bee, alive and darting when she sees a beautiful young man. In this love duet, the dancer plays the roles of both lovers, the young maiden enthralled by a young man, and the man himself. The man most often described in Bharata Natyam is the god Krishna, who comes to earth in human form. The poet says that Krishna appears majestic like an elephant. He sways gently as he plays the flute. love between a woman and a man becomes a metaphor for the love between humanity and God. She is overwhelmed by love. She thinks of nothing else but Krishna. Initially, she is reacting on a very physical level. It's his physical beauty which has attracted her, and she goes to receive him. The sound of his flute touches something very deep within her and she responds to this and physically she invites him into the house. And this is the way I do it when I perform it. I'm not talking about the physical house, but I'm talking, of my, uh, talking about my spirit, my inner self. And I say, come to me, come within me. And I think this is the point where you have the aesthetic love. Really, it's a high point of aesthetic love. And from this aesthetic love, we go into a love which is, we can call it transcendental, something which goes beyond. In India, as in many other parts of the world, dance has its origins in religion. The gurus who teach Bharata Natyam are respected as much for their philosophical knowledge as for their knowledge of the steps. We make an offering to the deity before each class begins. We don't plan anything before we start teaching a dance step or before adding steps or expression to a piece of music.
at the beginning of a class, we simply think of the deity and the class unfolds spontaneously. When I teach the basic dance steps, each student performs it in a different way. In the Madri or Devi Hamsatoda, the Solukum or Unboda Solukum or Coronel Solukum. In order to be able to do this, I must have my own understanding and feelings about the art. The Epudi Varun Sona Nama Modala the Wonaran Dadil and Unarchil. These basic feelings are called Kundalini. They are feelings that should rise up from here towards your stomach, then to your chest, then your brain, and then finally return to your heart and soul. At that point, one's whole body is enveloped by this energy and one experiences a feeling of transformation. When I had a chance to dance Indian, at first I was like, oh, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to do that? But then, you know, I got, the, I got that, that hyperactive feeling again. I was like, this is fun. I, I like this. You know, I got to meet a lot of, of Indian kids, a lot of Indian people. They, they helped me out in my dancing. They told me about their culture. I told them about my culture, where I come from. And... It's, it's interesting to, to, to cross like two totally different people and like match. And you, you'll find out you probably have a lot in common, just different ways. Bhangra is a folk dance from the Punjab in northern India. It is danced by farmers to celebrate the harvest and at weddings. Now, Bhangra has become a way of remembering India for people living abroad, a way of confirming their cultural identity. This particular wedding is being celebrated not in India, but in England. The dancers are not farmers, but teachers, shopkeepers, and government workers. As a matter of fact, all the members of the group, except one or two, were born here in England. We're all brought and we're brought up here in, in Birmingham, all Brummies. <laughs> we went to school together, the majority of us. So, um, you know, India, we haven't been back for ages. I mean, the last time I went was I was about eight, so it's a long time. Clap that side, then clap this side. Vijay Mihe and his friends learned Bhangra in their late teens when the dance and its music became popular in England. Ready? After four then, a one, two, three, four, left. We saw that young Asians, you know, we didn't have anything which we could relate ourselves to. Left. Right. Left. All I had was home and school, really. Um, outside life, we didn't know how to relate, except the English way, obviously, like going down, playing football, listening to top 40, things like that. And so Bhangra was there as a gateway towards something and uh, it's made us feel very, very proud of ourselves and of our people. And now we've been passing it on to younger children, showing them that like, this is what we didn't have when we were young. You know, Bungra's of you know, dance, that's it. But now we know that farmers were the ones who, who started it. And that, that was like our, our fathers, 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 you know. They worked hard. They were the ones who used to 
uh, work, you know, night, day or night in the fields and, you know, work so hard. I mean, working here is nothing like working over there. I mean, you have to work ten times harder. You didn't used to have the tools. And it's given us an understanding of how they used to work and how easy we've got it here. Vijay and his contemporaries are creating a new culture out of the two traditions they have inherited, urban English and rural Punjabi. For his wedding day, Vijay grows a beard and wears a turban, but his new appearance will last only the length of the ceremony. Being bilingual, being a part of two cultures, we got best of both worlds. We've got something here in England which we can relate to. No one can say to us, you know, you're, you're not part of us. Because we are, we're you not know, part of this country. And we can also relate to India. We can go to India and say, well, we're part of India. This is our country as well. We're strong in one and we're strong in the other. And we can relate to both. Dance came only because of music and music which is changing and changing and so what people do is they change the styles, just like music changes its style, dance also changes its style. You could do that movement, right, as an English movement, and then, which becomes Pungara, because of the moves of the shoulders, you know, it's just like that. So if I heard something which was with a stronger beat, I would stump immediately just go, and it's, if it's <laughs> so it's the same movement, just just in a different different uh, way of doing it. That's all. Once danced only by men, Bangra is now a celebration dance for everybody. I'm gonna go 
A global mass cultural exchange is bursting forth. Since dance and music travel more easily than words, a new international language is bringing us closer together. Sophisticated technology has made the world dramatically smaller. Music and dance videos communicate ideas and energy more quickly to more people than ever before. Film and video editing chop up time and space in new ways, so that dance, the art form of time and space, takes on new possibilities. Dancing in the air. Dancing underwater. Dancing created by the camera. speed language that can move quicker than the eye. It's 
not lying. We never lie with the video. We just give a possibility to show something in a different way. And for me, the speed, it's also in performance, it's completely another time. I, I, I don't like at all uh, performers and they're gonna make a video and they say, don't destroy the choreography, please don't destroy it. On TV, it's nothing, I mean. Even the light, you have to change it. You have to change the light. It doesn't fit at all for the eye. And um, yeah, the, the speed to look to TV, you, to the TV you do while you open the fridge, you, you're taking a beer, you're eating a sandwich, and then the TV is on there. I mean, it's, it's like this, mostly. In his explosive works, Belgian choreographer Wim van de Kebus taps into the spontaneous movement of the body's instinct to survive. This is dance in the raw. Especially what interests me okay, is so movements who have to happen. Yeah, but now we're with someone uh, mm -hmm. leaving. Mm -hmm. The same like if I threw my chair to you, I don't know, you would, you would catch it or you would avoid yourself. It's like a self-protection. As soon as you see, your, your eye um, makes you do the thing before you really think about it. This feeling that you do something before you are consciously. It's the same like when you fall in love, for instance. It's the same, like you are in love before you, you know it. The intensity of the moment is more important than the sense you give to it. Out of the basic elements of running, leaping, catching, dropping and falling, Wim van de Kebus is forging a new dance language. I'm very physical in this way. I like to, to sweat. I like to sweat after the performance. For me, it's good. It's not um, a sprint or something in one time, it has many rhythms. It's like, you know that you can recuperate here because just in this moment you say, now I give the energy. And now I really, it's like jumping and trying to stay as long as you can in the air. It's, it's this kind of feeling for me. And in one way, if you don't have a little this sympathy for it or this excitement, you cannot do it. It's like people who go to dance to a discotheque and they, 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 they dance until six in the morning, it's a trip. I think dance is something that can transform the state of people who do it or the state of people who look to it. I think dance is seduction, in fact. And it's used in religion ways, it's used in ritual ways, it's used in just for fun. People dance when they are sad too, it's, but it has to do something really from inside. Every time I danced, I had a high. I mean, every time I danced, it was the, the whole world was the stage, and I was in control of it, and there was a form and a ritual, and yet it was spontaneous, and life didn't matter bef after or that or before. The whole instant was all the globe and the universe at the moment, bang, at that moment. And then the exhilaration after would go on for constant, still, in the morning and the next day, and and you're all excited, and yet you never know if you can perform again. Each performance is your closing night, and it's your opening night. <laughs> 